Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about section 5.5, double angle identities. So a lot of what we talk about here is going to come from identities we already learned in sections 5.3 and 5.4. Now our double angle identities can be derived pretty easily from our um, sum identities for cosine, sine, and tangent. Now these were in previous sections, so if you haven't learned these three identities yet, go ahead and watch the videos for the sum and difference identities for uh, cosine, sine, and tangent, because we're going to be using them here. Now I do want to show you how the, these are derived because it's really easy. Um, and the whole idea of showing you how it's derived is so that you don't have to memorize like every formula, because I'm going to give you a lot of formulas in this video. And if you can recognize that it's not too bad to, to derive it, then you'll see that it's easier than memorizing. So first we're going to start with the, the double angle formula for cosine. And double angle just means that the angle is the same, but you're counting it twice. So like 2a or 2b or 2 theta. So if you think about 2a is just the same as a plus a, now this is exactly what we talked about before. This is just cosine of a sum of two angles cosine of a plus a. So using our identity, everywhere in the previous identity where we used to write b, the second angle used to be the letter b, we just put a second a. And then combine any like terms if you can. In this case, you're just squaring. And so this is our first double angle identity for cosine. Now there happens to be two alternate forms for cosine of 2a. This is the only one where there's three forms. Um, of this double angle identity. So I'm going to show you how to get the other two. Now first a quick reminder your Pythagorean identity because you're going to use this twice for the two alternate forms. Cosine a squared plus sine squared a uh, equals 1 and now your first alternate form you just take this Pythagorean identity and solve for cosine squared a and so you replace cosine squared a with 1 minus sine squared a and then you simplify, and your second form of your double angle um, cosine formula is 1 minus 2 sine squared a. Very similarly for the third version, our second alternate form, we're going to take our Pythagorean identity and this time solve for sine squared a. And so sine squared a gets replaced with 1 minus cosine squared a, and simplify, and you get your third version of cosine. 2a. All right, now we're going to derive our sine double angle formula. So sine of 2a. Again, just think of this double angle as just a plus a, and then use your previous sine of a sum identity. We used to write a b here, a plus b, and so now everywhere we would have had a b, we just replace it with a, and then simplify, and we get our sine 2a is equivalent to 2 sine a times cosine a. Lastly, we'll do the same thing for tangent. So tangent of twice in angles, tangent of 2a, break apart a plus a. And then if you remember our tangent sum identity, this used to say tangent a plus tangent b. And then down here was tangent a times tangent b. But because the angle is the same, we just replace every b with the letter a and then simplify and we get our tangent of 2a formula. So here's all five of our double angle identities, our double angle formulas. Technically, it's just three if you think about it, cosine 2a, sine 2a, but, and tangent 2a, but there's three forms for tangent 2a. Okay? And if you recall what we just talked about, the second and third alternate forms for cosine 2a can be found using the Pythagorean identity. Okay, so we're going to use these in a few examples. So our first example, notice we're given a cosine value. So cosine theta is 3 over 5, and we're told that sine is negative, um, a negative value, less than 0. Now we're going to find three different values. We're going to find sine of 2 theta, cosine 2 theta, and then last, tangent of 2 theta. Now real quick, I want you to recognize that we don't know what the angle theta is, we don't know the angle value, but we, we just know what cosine of that angle equals. And we're going to somehow figure out, well, what is sine, cosine, and tangent of twice that angle. And this is all going to be without knowing the actual angle value. 
All right, so starting with sine two theta, we actually first have to find just sine theta. So even though, even though the question says find sine two theta, we start with just sine of regular theta. And this is our Pythagorean identity. This is sine squared theta plus this is cosine squared theta, and that was the value we were given. We fill this in, and then we simplify and start to solve for sine squared theta. Feel free to pause this and solve and see if you get the answer that I'm about to show you. Okay, so you simplify, you subtract this, um, what would be 9 25ths over to the right side, and we end up with sine theta is negative 4 fifths. So when you take the square root, it would be plus and minus 4 fifths, but we were told sine is negative, so we pick the negative. Now that we have sine theta, we can use our double angle identity to find sine 2 theta. Quick reminder from our previous slide, sine 2 theta equals 2 of sine just regular theta times cosine theta. Okay, so then we just fill in our values. Here's our sine theta we just found. Here's our cosine theta that we were given. Final answer, sine 2 theta is negative 24 25ths. Okay, continuing with the same example, but now finding cosine 2 theta. So we're going to use our double angle identities for cosine, and we're actually, I'm going to show you all three. You don't have to do all three, you just pick one, but I'm going to show you that all three will work. So starting with our first version of cosine 2a, we know everything we need now because of what we just did in our previous example. We now know sine of a, and we were given sine cosine of a. Just think of a as, as theta here. Okay, so just replacing a with theta, we were told cosine theta is 3 fifths, so we plug that in. We just found sine theta was negative 4 fifths. Plug in to the formula and simplify, and we get negative 7 25ths. Now, we're going to do this two more times, but again, you don't have to always do this three times. I'm just showing you the alternate options. Okay, let's use our second form of cosine 2a, and then we're just filling in our values. So cosine a was 3 fifths. Fill this into our formula and simplify. Same answer, negative 7 25ths. And then our third version. This time we need to plug in what sine a equals or sine theta. And in our formula, we plug in negative 4 fifths and get the same answer, negative 7 25ths. So we had enough information to use any of these formulas, um, but I want you to recognize something real quick before we move forward. If we never had to do part one of this um, example, if we never had to find sine 2 theta, if we were just told find cosine 2 theta, then version two would actually have been the easiest because we were told what cosine theta equals. So we just plugged in the given value. But because we had done the first part, finding sine 2 theta, that's why the other two versions of this also were easy to figure out. All right, now let's find tangent of 2 theta. Just like with sine, we're going to find tangent theta first. Okay, So tangent theta, because we've done the work to find sine and cosine theta, we might as well use that information. And so we'll just say sine over cosine is tangent, plug in our values and tangent theta is negative 4 thirds. Then, using our double angle formula for tangent, tangent of 2 theta, we're just going to fill in our value for tangent theta here in the numerator and tangent theta here in the denominator, and it's going to get squared. Okay, So negative 4 thirds on top times 2, negative 4 thirds on bottom gets squared, and after you simplify, we get 24 sevenths. Okay, we could also have found tangent 2 theta by taking the quotient of sine 2 theta and cosine 2 theta. Now, this would work easily because we've already found these two values. Had we not already found sine 2 theta and cosine 2 theta, this would have been more work. But we've already done all that work, so we might as well show that this is going to give us our same answer. So tangent 2 theta, think of 2 theta as like our angle here. It, you have to match up the arguments or the angles. So this is equal to sine of 2 theta over cosine of 2 theta. We found out those numbers. We've plugged them in from our previous two answers, and we get the same answer we just got, 24 sevenths. 
All right, let's work out this example here. Find the values of all six trig functions of theta, given that cosine two theta is four fifths, and that theta is an angle in quadrant two between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. Okay, so real quick, recognize that we don't know what the angle theta is, but we do know what cosine of two theta equals, so we know cosine of twice that angle theta. But we are asked for the six trig function values of just theta. All right, in order to figure this out, we need to figure out at least one of our six trig function values for regular theta, not twice theta, but just regular theta. And now in order to do this, we have to use our given information, which is cosine two theta. So we're gonna go to our double angle formulas for cosine. Remember we had three options and we're gonna pick one of them. We're gonna pick the one that involves sine theta. Okay, this is gonna allow us to find what sine theta equals and then we'll be able to get the other five trig function values from here. We were given that cosine two theta is four fifths, so we fill that into our formula, and then we're gonna solve for sine theta. So feel free to pause it and try to work this out. We're gonna find sine theta. All right, after starting to simplify, you get one tenth equals sine squared, and then you're gonna square root both sides. And because theta is in quadrant two, sine is positive, and so we get sine theta is square root one over 10, or after rationalizing, square root 10 over 10. Or if you want to, you can just leave this as square root one, which becomes one on top, and square root 10 on bottom. Okay, so we found one out of our six trig functions. We're gonna use that information to find the other five. From our given information and from what we just figured out, for the angle theta, we know sine was one over root 10, so sine is opposite side over hypotenuse, and then we can use our Pythagorean theorem to get our adjacent side. Now that we know all three sides of this triangle, we have everything we need to find the remaining five trig function values for our angle theta. So cosine theta, after you rationalize, is negative three root 10 over 10, tangent theta, is negative one over three. Cotangent is negative three. Secant theta is negative root 10 over three. And last, cosecant theta is square root 10. We're gonna do this example now where we verify an identity. So we wanna prove that this equal sign here is actually valid. And so we're gonna pick what, what would probably be the more complicated side of this equation. We can break down both sides, but it looks like the left side has a little bit more going on. So we're gonna focus on the left side. All right, using the left side of the equation, first rewrite cotangent x using the fact that cotangent is si cosine over sine. Okay. Then use your double angle formula or identity for sine two x. So for sine of twice an angle, the double angle formula for sine two x is just two sine x times cosine x. Now think about where we're gonna go. We're just gonna simplify now. The sines divide out, sine x divides out here, and then the cosines multiply. So you get two cosine squared x. And then remember where you're trying to go with this. You're trying to prove that this equaled, the left side equaled the right side here. And so to figure out the right side, you kind of have to look at where you're at and see if this looks familiar. And if you look back at your formulas, this actually is part of one of your double angle formulas. This is part of your cosine two X formula, cosine double angle formula. This expression here is on the right side of that formula. And so you're gonna take this expression that you have and you're gonna solve for it within your double angle formula here. So you're just gonna add the one to the other side. So you have two cosine squared X equals one plus cosine two x, which is exactly what you were asked to prove. And so you've shown that this ver um, identity is in fact verified. In this example, we're gonna simplify each expression. So this does require that we recognize how what we are given fits in with one of our identities or formulas. Okay, so this part A, if you look at it, you have cosine squared of something minus sine squared of the same thing. And so this looks like your double angle formula for cosine, where your argument 
was a, in this case, is 7x. So you can rewrite this as cosine 2 of 7x, where a was 7x, and then just simplify cosine 14x. Final answer. The next one, part b, this one's a little bit trickier because you have a sine times cosine, but the angles are the same here. And so the multiply by 1, you sort of have to think ahead after looking at your list of formulas what you need. And you need a 2. And here's why. This looks like your double angle formula for sine. Okay, so your left side, or this expression you're actually given back here, it was sine of an angle times cosine of the same angle. And if you look at your list of formulas, well, it looked very much like the right side of sine 2a, this um, double angle formula for sine, but it was missing the 2. So that's why we wanted to multiply by the number 1 in the form of 2 over 2. And so we take the 2 that we need for the formula, for our double angle formula, move it into the parentheses and just keep the other 2 from the denominator and leave it on bottom as a 1 half. And so what's in the parentheses now is our sine 2a. So this is sine of 2 times 15. And then if you simplify just a tiny bit, this is sine of 1 half sine of 30 degrees. And we know that value, so 1 half out front times sine of 30 degrees, which is also 1 half. Final answer, 1 fourth. In this example, we're going to be writing sine 3x in terms of sine of x. So what I want you to recognize before we move forward is that you're trying to take a 3x and somehow break it down and just have x. And so you're going to have to use a series of your formulas for um, this process. Okay, so this is maybe the trickiest part of this problem, to recognize that you need to break apart 3x as 2x plus 1x. And the reason you want to do this is because you have formulas for both of these. Okay, we have a formula for sine of 2x, and we have a formula for sine of a sum. We have a formula for sine of adding up two angles. Okay, so that's why we wanted to specifically break apart 3, 3x, in terms of 2 and 1, 2x plus 1x. Okay, so first use your sine sum identity from the previous section. And so you're in that section we wrote sine of a plus b, so your a value would be the 2x, and then the b value would just be regular x. All right, now this part, if you recognize what's happening here, see if you can see it, what got changed here was both double angles that are present in this equation. And so your double angle identity for sine 2x and your double angle identity for cosine 2x, we used our formulas and plug them into our equation. Now you just start adding and um, combining like terms. The cosines get squared. And then you have to distribute this sign back here into the parentheses. And now this part here, you're just going to start replacing anything with a cosine because of what we know about our Pythagorean identity. So this step, this requires that you Remember where you're headed with this problem. The problem said to write things in terms of just sine x back here, just sine x. And so at this stage of our work, there was cosine x's present. So we had to think about, well, how do I rewrite cosine x, or in this case, cosine squared x, where it has a sine x? And the way that we can do that is to refer to our Pythagorean identity and solve the cosine squared x for um, the equation for cosine squared x. And so we just replace everything with the cosine squared x with a 1 minus sine squared x. And now notice all of your sine um, functions only have x as the argument. Sine x, sine x, even though it's squared, sine x, sine x, and sine x, exactly what the question asked. And then we just simplify. Okay, So you distribute this 2 sine x from the front you're going to distribute this sine x right here from the back and then combine like terms. Final answer, 3 sine x minus 4 sine cubed x. Okay, so there are eight more formulas in this section. The next four are product to sum identities and then the last four will be sum to product. 
And the reason why everything's in this section, there's so many formulas in this section, a total of 12, is because of how you derive them. So this is just a quick slide for how you're going to get your product to some identities. You don't really have to worry too much about deriving them, but I do want to show you how. So if you want to, go ahead and pause this and take a look at how you derive them. It's just from the cosine, um, to begin with, the cosine of a sum and cosine of a difference identities, you add them up. Okay, and then you can do very much the same thing by subtracting. And then you do the same thing for sine of a sum and sine of a difference to get the next two. So here's your four product to sum identities. Now, why it's called product to sum is because exactly what you see, you have a product cosine A times cosine B becomes the sum of something. Cosine A plus B plus cosine A minus B. So you're starting with a product on the left side, sine A times sine B, and it becomes a sum on the right side, cosine plus cosine. Okay, so you have your four product to sum identities here. Let's work with one of these examples out using our product to sum identities. Write four cosine 75 degrees times sine 25 degrees as the sum or difference of two functions. So if you notice what the question is asking, you have to use your product to sum identities, one of them, because you are actually given a product to start with, cosine of an angle times sine of an angle, and then you're told to write it as a sum or difference. So you're starting with the product, and you're told to write it as a sum or difference. All right, so if we refer back to our list of product to sum identities from the previous slide, the one that we're working with has a cosine times a sine. And so we're going to use that version that um, version of our product to sum identities. We have cosine, in this case, our A is 75 degrees and our B is 25 degrees. So everywhere in this formula where there's an A, we're going to write 75. And where there's a B, we're going to put 25. And now this 4 in the front, this is just an extra constant multiplying our expression. So we're just going to keep that 4 on the right side over here. And so this four just carries over and then we fill in our values and then we start simplifying where we can. And our final answer, so the four divides with one half and we get two sine of 100 degrees minus sine of 50 degrees. And so we did answer the question because we started with a product cosine times sine and we did end up with either a sum or difference and in this case it was a difference. All right, now your last four identities are sum to product. So exactly the opposite of what we just saw with the previous four identities. You're starting with a sum, so sine A plus sine B, and you can rewrite it as a product, sine times cosine. Now, yes, this is a difference, sine A minus sine B, but you can just think of it as like sine A plus negative sine B if that helps you understand why it's called sum to product. And so everything is starting out with a plus or minus on the left, and then on the right side, there's invisible multiply signs in between here. Okay. Now, how you derive these ones, um, you have to use a little bit of substitution, but just so you see it real quick with this one, our first sum to product identity, um, I'll just sort of talk you through it real fast. You would just multiply both sides by two, and then you have to rewrite these expressions, a plus b and a minus b. And you can use substitution. Um, you can like introduce new letters. Like you can call a plus b u and a minus b v and rewrite this a and b over here using that, um, those letters. You can solve for them. All right, so let's try this example using our sum to product identities. Write sine of 2 theta minus sine of 4 theta as a product of two functions. Now, even if this didn't say using a sum to product identity, hopefully you can recognize that that's what you have to use because you're starting with a, a sum, or technically this is a difference, and you're trying to write it as a product because that was the directions. So if you line up what you're given with the previous formulas, you have sine of something minus sine of something. So sine of a minus sine of b. And so here was our formula from the previous slide. So everywhere 
there's an A in the formula, we're going to put 2 theta, and everywhere there's a B, we're going to put 4 theta. And then once we have our formula filled in, we're going to simplify, and we just have a total of 6 theta on top here, and negative 2 theta on bottom, or I'm sorry, on the top of the second one. And then we have to simplify 6 theta over 2, negative 1 theta here. And then this is the answer, but we know something about sine of negative theta. We know sine of negative theta is equal to negative sine positive theta because sine is an odd function. So the final final answer would be negative 2 cosine 3 theta times sine theta. Okay, so here is a summary of all of the uh, identities or formulas from this section. There was a lot, but what I want to emphasize is that you don't have to memorize all of these. The, if you do need to know them, um, I would recommend trying to remember how you get them. And let me explain that real quick. So you basically need to just know your formulas for sum and difference of cosine, sine, and tangent. And this was from the previous sections, um, 5.3 and 5.4. If you know these ones, and technically if you just know these three, because there was six, if you know these three, you can actually come up with all 12 of these other formulas we learned in this section. Um, I know I briefly went through it, but I, I showed you how you can get these three versions for cosine of 2a. And then I also showed you how you can get sine 2a and tangent 2a. For the product ones, you can go through that. You just end up adding, doing a combination of adding or subtracting your original um, sum and difference formulas. And then the product to sum, those ones are a little bit trickier. You have to use substitution for the arguments, like I mentioned on that slide. Um, but you still can get those also from previous formulas. And so what I said a minute ago is, you really only have to know these three and you can get the rest of your identities because even if you don't know the other three versions of the sum and difference, if you look at all the signs, and by signs I mean S-I-G-N-S, -S, signs with the G, they're very much identical. So if you know these three, the sum formulas for cosine, sine, and tangent, you can find the difference formulas, the ones with the minus sign. And then once you know those six, you can find out, you can derive all the rest of these formulas. So if you know cosine, your cosine of a sum, if this is a plus sign, this is a minus. Sine of a sum, if this is a plus sign, this is also a plus sign. Tangent of a sum, there's a plus on top, a minus on bottom. And then when you find the difference formulas, everything switches. Minus here means plus here. Minus here means minus here, minus here, means minus here, and plus on bottom. And then you can use all of those to figure out your double angle identities, your product to sum identities, and last, your sum to product identities.